Every dog has his day. Okay, okay, I'm reloaded! Hello, I'm Tiffany Shields and welcome to Debonair Productions Sports Today. I'm here with Contra Costa College head coach, Alonzo Carter. Mr. Carter, thank you for having us here today in your office. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. So, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's get it started. Okay. Uh -oh. So what do those words mean Sun to you? Flashback. Oh, right, right, right. right. Flashback. <laughs> you know, when I hear those words, it reminds me of the good days. You know, I had a great career from 89 through 93 being privileged to be part of MC Hammer's posse, part of the Hope for Our Ho, which was our group, along with touring with him, mm -hmm. did the Oprah Winfrey Show, Arsenio Hall, American Music Awards, the Grammy Awards, MTV Awards, did it all. He gave me, I was blessed to be able to travel the world and be part of that group that he was taking care of. Mm -hmm. You know, without him, you know, I'm very blessed to be part of that because without him, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. So it taught you a lot of, uh, kind of built your foundation for what you have laid out today? Almost so definitely, speak. yeah. I was a student at Cal State Hayward. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a junior in college. Mm -hmm. Teenage dad, had my son at age 17, so I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do with myself, but I went to Cal State Hayward because I wanted to be around for my son, take care of my son. But I never gave up my first love, which was dancing. That was my hobby, but I played football, ran track, and MC Hammer was local at the time, went to McClymouth High School just like we did. We used to see, go to Palladium in San Francisco and always dance to his songs and stuff. And then we had a chance to meet him at his original Let's Get It Started video, which he okay. filmed at Sweet Jimmy's. Mm -hmm. And we went down there as extras and he seen me and myself, uh, Michael Session, which we, in our group, we had a group at the time called Club New Ho, which ended up becoming a whole frat hole. But um, it, was, it was Heavy Ho and myself, King Ho. Uh -oh. And we uh, had on our biker tights and all this stuff. And he seen us dancing, pulled us out. We ended up being extras in that video. And we just kept in contact with him. And when he signed his major deal with Capitol Records down in LA, um, I ended up just following him and um, catching Greyhound, using my, my my college credit cards to get on Southwest to fly down there. Anything he had going on in LA, he would just always see us and he just seen how persistent we were. And I had another friend, Alvin Howard, which went to Cal State Northridge, mm -hmm. which we ended up calling him Mighty Ho. Oh, well, so we he, definitely need to uh, insert some of that video with the biker shorts. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna get some of that. We got some good well, stuff. Well, so. definitely, uh, you know, it's like, we can't touch you, you can't touch us. So we wanna just <laughs> congratulate you on your recent uh, Bay Valley Conference uh, win. So congratulations on that. That must have meant tremendous uh, uh, amount of success for you when you won that Bay Valley Conference title. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a blessing to be able to put something together to inherit a program that had never won the Bay Valley Conference, Contra Costa. We wanted to make it relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted uh, John Wade, which hired me, which was our athletic director at the time, McKinley Williams, the president. One of the biggest things they wanted me to do, not only was to win games, make sure these young men were graduating. Mm -hmm. And I promised them we would do both. Okay. And in, in the last three years, we've had over 20 young men that move on to Division One schools, and then we have another 25 or so that went on to Division Two schools. So our GPA is up close to 3.0 as a team. We've had over 25 young men on the dean's list. Wow. We've had a high success rate as far as transferring our young men to four-year schools, and we've also had a high success rate on the football field, too. Now, let me take you back a little bit. Uh, let's look at your, your, your football coaching career. Mm -hmm. You did eight years at McClyman. Yes. Three years at Berkeley High as yes. a head football coach. Mm -hmm. But you uh, were head track coach for 13 years at McClyman. Yeah. Now, is that now is there a connection between the two sports, and do you find more of a passion on the track field or the football field? Well, What's your passion? The, the, my first job came as a track coach. Okay. Uh, Oliver Chambers hired me at McClyman's High School. I was a young guy. I had just came off tour with Hammer. Didn't know what I was going to do with myself, but I knew I, it was instilled in me that work ethic that I learned from being with him. I wanted to do something and go back to my community. So I went back to McClymouth High School and started off coaching track. And in the process, he wanted me to do football as well. So once I said the track thing, my first year, I kept hearing that that's the guy that used to dance for Hammer. Mm -hmm. So I got tired of hearing that. So <laughs> two years later, we ended up winning the OIL championship, going to the state meet. And so my track career kind of bolted my football career. So what I tried to do was intertwine the two. And at a school like McClymouth, where it's a small enrollment, I made sure all the football players ran track. Mm -hmm. So I was more successful as a track coach, but I wasn't really getting the props as a football coach because track wasn't as relevant as far as 
football being a major sport. So that was one of the things that I had to try to make sure the track and the football came together and it kind of propelled me to where I am right now. So is there more, is there a connection between your young man running track and playing football? Oh yeah, they go hand in hand. You know, the speed, you know, that's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, you want young men that can run, proper technique, uh, the proper training, which I use to this day. I was blessed to be able to train um, Nandi Asamoah, okay. which he went to Cal and trained him for the NFL Combine, dropped his 40 from a 448 to 436. Okay. And he went from a fifth round to the first round. And I was, I've trained Javid Best, you know, uh, Taiwan Jones, Marshawn Lynch, you know, a lot of guys that have come through our program, even though they didn't go to my school, they would either train with me in the summer or in the off season. And a lot of that had to do with the speed training things. So we do something a little bit different. So I kind of intertwine the two because a lot of people that do this training, they don't have the football background. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of football guys don't have the track background. So me, I just kind of meshed that perfect world together. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I've been successful up to this point. Okay. Well, in an article uh, that I read, uh, written in Contra Costa Times, um, during the time you were making your transition, when you resigned from Berkeley High to go on the position over here at Contra Costa College, mm -hmm. you were quoted saying, um, I got my work cut off for me on the field, but I will win more than one game. So with that being said, <laughs> what are your strengths of the coach, of your, you know, what are your coaching strengths that gave you the confidence to make a statement like that, knowing that you're moving from one level to the next? Well, I just felt like at every level, when I left McClymers and went to Berkeley High, I was told I wasn't going to be able to win because Berkeley High is the second largest school in the North Coast section. McClymonds is one of the smallest. So one of the things I was always being told what I can't do, and I knew coming from Berkeley High to here, it was all about your support system. So if you feel like you have the proper support system in place and a good group of coaches, I went and got young, hungry guys that was hungry just like myself, and we just kind of put, put together a plan. We wanted to make sure the young men did graduate but in the same breath, we wanted to take care of making sure they moved on to a four-year schools because if you do that, that's what attracts people to a junior college and that's what attracts people to want to come here and play because that was the problem. Prior to me getting here, they were 1-19 mm -hmm. and not only were they not winning games, none of the guys were graduating and moving on to four-year schools. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that attracted me, not only could I only help kids from Oakland or Berkeley, well, you had a junior college, you could help kids from all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the selling points that made me lead to want to come here and take that challenge and, and, and just feed this whole area because, you know, the Contra Costa, Richmond area wasn't really having that. So I wanted to bring that, and now we've branched off. We got kids from El Cerrito High School, Pinot Valley, Hercules High School, Kennedy High School, Richmond High School, as well as Oakland and Berkeley. So we wanted to make sure that we, 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 we brought some pride back to this area, and I think we've done that. Well, you definitely have won more than one game. Oh, yeah, we won more than one game. <laughs> so how did you exactly turn the team around? Because I know for a while, since the 90s, you know, you guys, well, the comments were on a constant losing streak, and kids didn't even want to come to the school, because, or even, let alone play for the team. So how did you exactly turn the team around? Well, I think uh, the biggest challenge was being told at a coaches' convention when I first took the job, a lot of the other head coaches from across the state have pretty much told me that it wasn't a good job, you know, why would you want to take that job? They use some words that I can't use on television to describe a job. And I think that challenged me in knowing that there are 73 junior colleges in the state of California and there's only five African-American head coaches. And to be a part of that fraternity, to be part of that five, I felt blessed and I felt honored. And I was like, I'm gonna make sure I do my part. I wanna make sure I take it to a level and set a standard that those other 68 schools that don't have somebody like myself, now when that second time around, there's another Alonzo Carter somewhere out there. There's a young guy that's inspiring to be a head coach at college level. I never thought I would even be coaching junior college. I started off as a volunteer high school coach, and here it is. My journey is not over. You know, I feel I've been blessed to be able to do what I'm doing, so I wanted to make sure that my inner drive didn't let none of that deter me. I've always had that. I'm born and raised in West Oakland, California. I went to McClymouth High School, so it's embedded in me. My mom did a good job raising me to never, you know, second guess yourself. Right. You know, kind of, you kind of own your own. When you're coming from Oakland, you know, you kind of just have that, that 
that thick skin. You know, you 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 know, in order for you to make it, it's not going to be easy. You got to persevere through things, and you can't make a whole bunch of excuses. I live and die by that excuses. You know, when you make excuses to me, you you giving up or you giving yourself a way out. And I think when you're dealing with young men, you want to take them as a father. I'm a father myself, and being a young father, I kind of knew that going out at 17 I was a dad mm -hmm. so I had every excuse to be out in the streets doing something just to make my money or to take care of my kids you know and that's what was hot back then selling drugs and hanging out and all that all that stuff that you see people doing where I was working at McDonald's mm -hmm. you know I had to go to high school graduate go to college no scholarship I applied through ELPS mm -hmm. got accepted to six colleges and chose to go to Cal State Hayward so I can be a father to my son so that was the biggest thing for me, just to persevere through that and, and keep that inner drive. You know, that's my inner drive would never leave me. So I wasn't going to be, you, couldn't, you can't tell me I'm not going to be successful in nothing I'm not going to do.